Hey there, cats and guineas. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode one of the anime series Noragami Aragoto, the second season of Noragami. And I've been waiting for so long for this series, um, just minutes into it, and I feel like I never left it. You know, um, very much is this episode kind of just refamiliarizing us with the environment, with what's going on within it. Yato doing his, uh, you know, goods and services, trying to become this well known god being very much bottom of the barrel hardly known god and everything um he and uh hiori and yukine you know they are all still playing the avoidance game with uh bishamon well you know hiori doesn't really know much about the whole situation but she's still slipping out of her body they still have that ongoing deal of you know her seeking yato's help and figuring out what set her off to begin with? How can we make this right again? Um, she even, you know, zones out in the middle of class. <laughs> She's talking to a friend about, you know, not zoning out, not blanking and falling asleep during a very necessary test. And boom, she's out. She's out frolicking. <laughs> she catches up with Yato and Yuki, you know, as uh, he's basically babysitting for parents who haven't slept in a week. And this baby, interestingly enough, is the uh, sort of through line of the first phantom, the first creature that they then have to quell. And we see that he is in top form, you know, very much Yato and Yuki, they are working in tandem uh, as we left them in, you know, the first season. And I love that. I, I love just the familiarity, like I say, all throughout the course of this episode, it just felt like coming home again it felt like yes this is this is the way i left it and of course the dynamic between yato and bishamon as we saw in the first season got very heated and there was that promise she was going to be gunning for yato and we see that that's very much still her position she's trying to find him yato and uh you know yuki are kind of just hiding out when they see her going after some creatures and uh trying to save a spirit as it were a torn spirit which um it's interesting you know as this spirit becomes her latest amongst so many regalia um you know she's a broken mirror and that's because of her being in a sort of an incomplete torn spirit having succumbed to the phantom blight as we saw in season one you know yato himself had become uh succumbed to uh, during certain points and um of course, we're calling back on the fact with uh, this guy, <laughs> Kugaha, he's basically letting the bomb drop to Bishamon. Hey, remember Kazuma? You, you know, he disappeared a little while ago. And um, you have Yuki kind of wanting to go thank him for his being integral in the ablution, you know, uh, ritual that saw the healing of Yato in season one and all this kind of stuff. Um but they don't they don't want to mix ties you know yato doesn't want to mix ties because it'll lead bishamon back to him and there's a lot of bad blood between them going back centuries and centuries you know um when that mysterious element of yato's history his past where he was seemingly bloodthirsty and um just very almost malevolent there's still a lot of that enigmatic nature. What exactly revelations, you know, what kind of revelations along the course of this season might we have and delve into along those lines to find out a little bit more about what he was up to back then. And, um, of course, we saw some of that in the first season. I highly recommend you check out the first season if you haven't. To get a little more backstory on that, certain characters cropped up through the course of it that led back to Yato's past. And, um, you know, Yuki basically, once again, we kind of have that element of his character on display in this episode where he's distanced. You know, he, he just very much as a wandering spirit, as a young teenage boy, he just wants to be able to experience a real life. And he's walking down this sort of sidewalk, uh, you know, along the side of this river. And you have just school kids about the same age as him walking past him, through him. He feels invisible. And I thought it was interesting as hell that he's approached by somebody and told, you know, don't step on the flowers, whatever it is. And lo and behold, as coincidence would have it, if you believe in such things, it's one of Bishamon's regalia. Um, we don't actually catch this character's name, and I don't remember off the top of my head if this is someone we saw in the first season or not. But um, 
that whole aspect, the way Yuki's taken aback by that, like, oh, you work for Bishima. Seriously? <laughs> like, what trouble am I going to get into with this? <laughs> you know, and seeing the old familiar faces, uh, Kufuku, Daikoku, and uh, just re-familiarizing myself with Bishamon and her regalia, and, and their, how kick-ass, how tremendously kick-ass she was in the first season, left me wanting more time and time again, and um, from what I can sort of, uh, you know, see from the synopsis of this sequel season, she's going to, you know, be featured primarily... Uh, very heavily in it so that has me totally stoked and excited and um as i say she is able to quell this phantom blight and save this wandering spirit minaha who has now been welcomed into her cast of regalia um i absolutely loved it i loved getting refamiliarized with these characters felt like i never left them uh, in all the time that it's been since the first season ended and you know the start of this season now and um, I can't wait to see what this story beholds for us, you know, um, how long it's going to be before Bishamon and Yato go head to head. Um, how many of the other gods and goddesses are going to either get in the way or, you know, stay out of it, intervene or stay out of it. Um, what, you know, this dynamic is going to mean for Yukine uh, as far as his own desire to have a life maybe he'll be <laughs> seeking to be taken under the tutelage of Bishamon and leave Yato Pakin because you know he, he he's <laughs> lamenting every other minute <laughs> how frustrating it is to be with Yato who is a complete and utter ignoramus you know he gives <laughs> 200,000 yen for a little plastic uh lucky cat or whatever that he's told from a like TV evangelist is going to bring him all this wealth and power, all the things he seeks, conveniently enough. And, um, you know, he's about to leave the apartment after the babysitting job has run amok with this phantom creature, you know, depositing itself all over the place. And um, they had to clean the place up, impromptu though it was. And just, you know, he's a hilarious character. I love the relationship between he and Hiori, much as I did in the first season with this impending deal of finding a way to quell her issues, her her spirit, if you will, spiriting away from her physical form. And um, those dilemmas, those personal dilemmas that we all face with, you know, Yukine uh, as a character, as a very human character, though he is a spirit, he still laments the life he was robbed of. And um, even in this modern era, he's becoming much more and more fluid to it. Under the tutelage of Hiroi, as we see, she's actually kind of, you know, tutoring him, having him do homework and studies, and um, just trying to let him format to the world the way it is in this era. Uh, you know, for those who don't remember, he was actually killed ages ago, and um, so this whole modern framework is a learning experience for him, a learning curve. And um, to see just the cuteness and sort of, you know... Uh, I don't know what you would say, loosey-goosey-brained <laughs> Kofuku and the uh, domineering Daikoku in response to Yato's just being a complete loon and everything. And uh, even toward the end of the episode, <laughs> he's like those four cheese cheesy buns or whatever, you know, you gotta try them out and all this stuff. As if he's like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, pick me up a couple, you know. <laughs> the character dynamics are instantly on par with where I remember them being. In season one and uh, this first episode out of the gate while it was largely just regaining our bearings and refamiliarizing ourselves it you know promises that there's going to be an epic story before us and uh, I can't wait to see how it unfolds so I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode one of Noragami Edogoto if you've seen it if you enjoyed it as much as I did if it picked right up for you uh, you know right where you left off much as it did for me um, just getting you know right back into the groove of it and seeing how hilarious and compelling this world this environment can be just in the span of one you know episode the starting episode for this new season and um if you are as sort of edge of your seat excited for that you know one-on-one -on -one battle that is 
potentially yet to come between Yato and Bishamon herself um, in all her just badassery glory, you know. Um, <laughs> she kicks a lot of ass. She looks good doing it. Her entire apparel, you know, all of these things that she utilizes when she's going up against phantoms, as skimpy as her outfit is, every element of it is the regalia with which she lays the smack down. And um, she just kicks all kinds of ass. I love that she's going to be more in focus in this series, uh, or rather season. And uh, yeah, as I say, anything goes in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it, whether uh, we agree on it or agree to disagree on it. Love having the conversation. And so yeah, otherwise it'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.